Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about what to do if you make a combo box and you see an ID there instead of the text that you're expecting to see, right? Like a customer ID instead of the customer's name. Why does this happen and how do you fix it? Today's question comes from Cooper in Loveland, Ohio, one of my Platinum members. Cooper says, I created a combo box in my Microsoft Access form to let users select the customer name. The combo box pulls data from a table of customers, which includes IDs and names. For example, the table lists, and I change the names, don't ever send me real names, uh, one Kirk, two Spock, three Bones, right? However, when I select the name in the combo box, it displays the ID, like the one, two, or three, instead of the name, Kirk, Spock, Bones. How can I adjust the combo box so that the names are displayed instead of the IDs? Well, Cooper, this is a common problem. It happens a lot. It's one of the reasons I'm making this video because I've seen this question a million times. Let's first talk about some prerequisites, some things you should know before we continue. First off, if you're not familiar with table relationships, like relating customers to orders or things like that, go watch my relationships video. This is one of those things that is foundational to Microsoft Access. If you're just used to Excel and working with spreadsheets, you got to learn relationships to really get how to use access. So de definitely go watch this video if you haven't yet. And go watch this video on making relational combo boxes. All right, a relational combo box is a combo box that gets its list of values from another table or query. For example, on your order form, you're getting a list of customers from the customer table. All right, so go watch both of these videos. They're free. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them and then come on back. All right, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. And in this database, I've got customers, right? Here's my customer table, and I've got orders, right? And in the order table, we store the customer ID so we know which customer placed the order. Now, we don't save the name in here, just the ID. That's how relationships work, right? But when you go to the customer form and you go to their orders, you don't want to see customer ID one in here or whatever. You want to see the customer's name. It just, it's more user friendly. Or if you're adding a new order, you want to be able to pick a customer from your list, right? So that's what a relational combo box does. Now let's do this. Let's go and delete the combo box that's on here right now. I'm going to slide this over here. All right, let's delete this combo box. I'm going to show you how this problem occurs. All right, I don't have a combo box here yet. I'm going to create one. So I'm going to go up to form design. I'm going to grab a combo box right there. We're going to drop it out here on the form and the wizard starts up. Okay, you want to pick values from another table or query. That's option one. Next, where do you want to get the values for your combo box? Let's just say the customer table for now. All right, customer table. Next. All right, what fields do you want in your combo box? Well, we need the ID. That's got to be in there. That's what's making our relationship, right? That's the bound field, okay? And let's bring in first name and last name. All right, next, what do you wanna sort by? All right, let's sort by first name and then last name. You can do it either way, whichever you prefer. Next, now, remember this screen. It says, how wide would you like the columns for your combo box? You can adjust these, you know, you don't want them too big, too small, right? But pay attention to this right here. It says hide key column. What is that hide key column? Well, hide key column means that customer ID is in there because that's the value that we're actually storing in the order form, in the order table, right? But we don't need to see it in the box. Now, if you turn this off, this will be the first visible column in the box and you will see that, you'll see that number. So that could be the first reason why you might see that number there, all right? But I'm gonna hide that key column. All right, then I'll hit next. And we're gonna store that value. We're picking a customer. We're gonna store the customer ID in the customer ID field of the order table, right? Next, what label do you want? Customer is fine. And we're done, all right? I'm not gonna take time formatting it and all that. But now if I save this and close it and then open it back up again, there you go. You can see there's my list of customers. Now, you're only seeing the first name in there. Why? Because these are separate columns. Okay, you'll see the last name when you open the box up, but just like how the ID is hidden, well, this only displays one column at a time. So what I do in my invoicing video is I make this query here called customer LFQ. This is a calculated query field. And what I do is I put together 
last name and first name. And it looks like that. All right, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Shift F2. All right, I create a new field called LF, and that's last name and a comma space and first name. So you get names like Ross, comma, Richard, Kirk, comma, James, and so on. So this is a new calculated field. And since this is one field now, this can be one column in a combo box along with the ID, which is the bound field, right? So now that I have this query, instead of using this combo box that only shows me one name, I can use that query to use for the data that goes in this combo box. It's the same data, right? But now I got last name and first name together in one field, which will look better in the box. So let's rebuild this box again. Okay, let's go to form design, find our combo box, drop it back down here. All right, look up the values from a table or query. Next, this time I'm gonna go to queries and pick that customer LF queue that I made. All right, next, now I want the ID and LF, that's my last name, first name field. Okay. Next, how do you want to sort it? Sort it by LF. Next, okay, now, remember I told you to remember this screen. It says, how wide would you like to make the columns for your combo box? Hmm, what's different? I saved it before in, uh, in Paint so you can see it, All right? Here's the new one. Notice what's different. Let me grab the pencil tool here, right? This thing right there, right? The hide key column, it's missing. It's not in the new one. Well, why is that? Well, this column only shows up if you're basing the combo box off of a table. If you're making it off of a query, you don't see that little checkbox there, but that's okay. You just have to know to make the width of this column zero, okay? And you can do that by simply grabbing that border right there and just dragging it all the way to the beginning. I like to go a little bit past it so it makes sure it's zero. And there you go. And now that column is hidden. If you don't do that, let me show you what happens. If you forget to do that and you go next, and then we're gonna bind customer ID and save that in the customer ID field. And we're gonna put customer as the label. This is what you get. Save it, close it, open it, and oh, look at that. There's the ID. Because we didn't make that column width zero. Okay, now. If you've already done this and you've already made the combo box, all is not lost. You can still fix it. All you have to do is go into the properties for this combo box. Go into the properties. All right. First thing you're going to do is give it a good name. All right. Because the combo box wizard doesn't let you name the combo box. It's one of my pet peeves about access. So we're going to call this and we're going to name it customer combo. That's the first thing we're going to change. Okay. But then come over here to format. Now under format, you can see the column count is two. Remember there were two fields in here, the ID and my LF field. And if you can't remember that, go over to data and you'll see here's the SQL statement that makes up the list of stuff that's in the box. It's a little more advanced, but if you simply zoom in here, shift F2, you'll see we're selecting customer LFQ dot customer ID. That's the customer ID field, comma, and then the LF field from this query, that's all this is. It's a, it's a statement that basically says we're grabbing these fields from that query and sorting it by the LF field, all right? But what's important to remember is we had two fields, two columns, right? Well, here's the column widths property, okay? Since we didn't make that column width zero, we can just simply come in here and do this. Boom, just make it zero. That's all you gotta do, okay? And if you wanna make this one wider now, because before we had one point something in one, we can make this guy two inches and just make sure that this property down here is the same as those. So two, and that'll fit both of those just fine. Okay. And now we're gonna save it and close it and close it and open it. And oh, look at that, it's fixed. And it still works. If we, if we change this to you know someone else, it'll still save that ID in the table because the ID is the bound field. That's another property you can see in here. If you go to data, you'll see bound column is one, which means the first bit of data, which is the customer ID, is what is getting saved to the table that this thing is based on, which is, in this case, it's order Q, but it's the order table. Okay, makes sense. Then all you gotta do is fix this, resize it and color it and make it all pretty. And then that's basically it. That's how you fix your combo box. 
The problem usually is most people get lost on this, right? If you base your combo box on a query, you will not see this, this hide key column. You just gotta remember to hide it yourself, that's all. And that, if it's not on our list, Sammy, if it's not on our list for the access team, that should be on there. If, you, if, if the wizard only sees one key column, it, it should definitely still give you this key column box. I think that's just silly. And you really shouldn't have multiple IDs in your combo box to begin with. The first column should always be an ID and that's it. <laughs> that's how it should be done. If you want to learn more about this stuff, this invoicing video is where I actually build the invoicing form with that combo box. You can check that out and learn more. And I cover calculated fields, including on forms and in queries, like I showed you in that customer LFQ in this video. And if you're new to Access, make sure you check out my Access Beginner 1 class. It's absolutely free. And in Access Beginner 2, I do cover the beginning of relationships, like relating like drivers to cars and things like that, relationships between your tables. So check that out. And of course, in my expert level series, we really go into relational design concepts, types of relationships, relational combo boxes, normalization, referential integrity, all the cool, you know, the cool kid database stuff is in my expert classes. And you'll find information on this on my website. I'll put links to all this stuff down below. I got tons of classes, folks, tons of classes. If you want to learn access, you're in the right place. But that is going to do it. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, 
Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.